Hi there and welcome to my beginner's guide for Exodus Borealis. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to cover all the basic gameplay mechanics, I'm going to talk about the gameplay loop and also I'm going to cover up all the necessary knowledge to set up a surviving base and a defense that will keep away the baddies for the first couple of years or so. Now, before we start, I put up timestamps into the description box down there, so if you're looking for answers for a specific topic, off you go. I respect your time. Now, with that out of the way, let's start properly. What is Exodus Borealis? The game is a really neat mix between a colony survival game and a tower defense game. A combination of genres which I'm quite frankly surprised that I haven't seen it more often, because it works out really, really well. So in the first part of the video I'm going to set up the colony, in the second part of the video we're going to set up the defenses, and after that I'm going to talk about special mechanics for the, of this game and summarize the whole gameplay experience and give you a couple of tips that are really really worthwhile to know, know early on and things that you should have on your way to have more fun while you're learning this game. Okay, so at the beginning Let's get over the user interface. Up here we have our control buttons, where we can build stuff, manage jobs, research, and check out our citizens. Over here we see how many adult people we have that can work, how many children we got that will grow into workers. Over here there's our resource window, neatly clustered into things that belong together, foodstuffs, stuff for clothing, stuff for metal, stuff for mortar and stone, and uh, wood and charcoal are grouped together in, a lo in logical groups. I appreciate that. So the first thing you need to do is pick up your people and set up a little base. The enemy will always come from this gate here, and your basic gameplay goal is to survive without dying and get the research done to build a victory statue and leave this map. The enemy will always come through this gate and try to path as directly as possible to your settlement's buildings. So your goal will be to set up that settlement in a vicinity, well, not too far away from the gate, but not too close either, and get that defenses and the resource production rolling. When you're new here, a couple of things worth to know. Your starting resources are on that crashed boat so your starting point is ideally somewhere in the vicinity of that boat. So choose to your own liking. The longer you play this game, the more you will grow and adapt your own strategies and you'll better know where you want to start out. So we're going to start out quite here in the vicinity of that. I'm going to take this little valley here. Now, first things that we're going to need are a mine. A mine will produce stone, and as you can see here, we're completely out of stone. Most inter interestingly enough, a mine can be built anywhere. It doesn't need to be placed on a deposit or something like that. So down it goes, and with the R button you can rotate these uh, buildings. So, what happens next is our people will swarm to that boat and deliver materials there. So, to get buildings properly done, you'll need builders, so go into the job management menu and assign one. The builders not only build the uh, buildings, they also clear out the building site, so if there are trees or anything pesky in the way, they'll get the job done. So with a mine, we now get to assign a miner. In mines you can either produce stone or ore, it's up to you, but at the beginning we just need stone. The next thing our settlement needs are houses. Every house can hold four people, two adults and the rest children. As we have now six adult people in our, in our settlement, let's start out with three houses. The resource uh, costs are here in the tooltip, and as you can see, a house will cost us stone, so good thing that we started out with the mine. Another thing we're going to need there is the storage barn. So let's put that down here, otherwise our stored materials will not be will not have any room. Another thing worth mentioning, the blue dot here in front of those buildings is the entrance. So you'll see that on a lot of buildings and it's pretty important to know that when you want to plan out your uh, city design. All right, after these things have been settled down, we need farms for the food production because we have only sown so much food on our shipwreck. 
So farms work like that. One farmer can support up to three farms, roughly. So we're going to start out with two because that's my favorite work ratio at the beginning of the game. Because your people are working quite inefficient early on. There's another thing worth mentioning. Everybody who has no job right now is working as a general worker. General workers are just uh, basically haulers that try to get the job done as good as possible. But also, if a worker has nothing to do right now, for example that farmer here, he doesn't have any fields to... Uh, to work at will also return to the general worker status so you don't need to worry too much about that so let's uh, move forward until these things are built so if you want to prioritize something you can click there and set a set up a priority so color will change accordingly as well you can lower the priority or even stop the construction of a building entirely pretty neat tool to plan out things the, the other thing that I want to mention is that you can also uh, plot out mass orders with the mass update tool. So here you can just set up uh, priority preferences as you want to, but also other things like cancelling constructions, rebuildings, destructions, plotting down fire modes for turrets, but we're going to set that up later. What, to, what should be uh, planted on on your uh, fields and what kind of trees should be planted. Really nifty things and useful stuff. Planting trees, I said. Let's go over, uh, over that as well. So tree nurseries are absolutely vital for the survival of your settlement because at some point those trees will be gone. And to have a healthy surplus of trees, you're going to need a lumberjack. Lumberjacks will not only uh, chop wood for you, they will also work at tree nurseries while they're not busy chopping trees. At the tree nurseries, you can decide what kind of woods you, uh, what kind of trees you want to build. There's uh, one that grows two years and yields thirty wood, and one that you know, grows uh, two to three years, uh, two years and three seasons and yields more wood. It's up to you, but I highly recommend you to build those nurseries because at some point your your wood will run out. And if you haven't um, taken your precautions, you will suffer greatly here. Okay, so with these things out of the way, what do we need else? A research lab, of course. Because without a research lab, there's going to be no technology. And with these things plotted down, we have the most uh, basic necessities of our settlement down. Here's a couple of things worth uh, mentioning. Every day in this game here is uh, re representing a season. So whenever that uh, day, uh, that clock here is running through, a day is over. Another thing worth mentioning is that you need more houses over the course of the time. Because every house can only house two adults and two, the rest will be children. This means here we already have six adults, so the next ch child that will uh, grow up will already need a new house. Every adult that has no house will just stay outside and ultimately most likely freeze to death in winter because when people don't have any access to their uh, to heat during winter, guess what? They die. All right, so the other thing is you will always uh, have to keep an eye out on your resource consumptions and how your resources uh, develop because your farms will produce a certain amount of food but you'll also need to research more crops to grow. At the beginning you only have the Ichi roots, but later down the road you will be able to research more and more of these uh, different foods. One word about foods, the longer they grow, they grow, the higher the yield, and the shorter they grow, the, sh the lower the yield. So basically when you're desperate about food, fast growing crops are way to go, and if you really got a nice buffer, Try to go for long-lasting uh, crops because they will help you out in times of need. So now we got the research down and we're going to go over that menu real quick. So we're going to start out with the defensive structure research because that's going to unlock towers. Another thing worth mentioning here is the citizen menu. Not only can you see what your citizens are doing there right now, you'll also be able to control how, how much... Uh, how your citizenship will develop 
So with this slider here, you can tell them how many births per year are allowed. Allowed. That's not necessary right now, but later down the road, you really want to control your population growth because uncontrolled population growth will eventually spiral out of control always. But another thing really worth mentioning here is the attributes column. Column here, you can see what your people are lacking and whatnot but i want to point this out because here you can see what kind of impact these things have education minus work efficiency clothing well that may, that tells you that they need to uh, reheat during winter raw meal minus speed minus carrying strength so if you research these things that add up oh wait a sec to research something you need to employ a researcher of course <laughs> if you research these things up here that uh, are for the citizenship basically most of these technologies in the the upper section are so here prepared raw food instead of uh, only eating the raw food we're preparing the raw food then goes cooked food then go feasts and so on and so forth upgrading these uh, stats will increase the efficiency of your workers and at some point it will be no problem at all anymore to uh, have several farms with one farmer and so on and so forth. So these things are really valuable if you want to improve the efficiency of your colony. Here there's the defense uh, tree, pretty obvious I'd say, and pretty important to mention here also is the uh, this uh, rider here charcoal mortar smelting steel these are the refining technologies sitting planning city planning offers you paths where which will provide faster movement of your people but i personally like to go for multi-season crops next because i am always happy if the food situation is under control all right so this is basically your the the basics you will have to work out and keep an eye out for the food production the next job after that will be to unlock charcoal production and mortar production to refine the next tier of resources which you will need to produce higher tier buildings and so on and so forth but the most important part is keep your people fed and keep your people housed and stay aware about the amount of uh, births here can be that can be controlled and rather grow to grow a little bit too slowly before growing uncontrolled because that can lead to a starvation and death spiral where your people will not get the jobs done in time and well due to starvation people start dying and nasty things happen okay so that's the end of the uh of the colony part because the rest from here is up to you how you how you manage all that is pretty much your own decision the most important things are now well known okay now to the defense part the enemy will always come over that gate and try to take the most direct approach to your buildings if the enemy hits the building it's a building he's going to do as much damage as possible to it eventually also killing people and then despawning so sometimes it's just like with every tower defense if a enemy leaks through and hits the base you'll suffer some damage but sometimes that might be an option you want to go for so to, to control the situation here we're going to need our defense buildings that's walls and right now towers so ideally my personal approach is start building a maze that starts out at the gate and funnels the enemy open as long as possible away from our town while we kill the enemy but since our workers are pretty low at the beginning and the distance here is pretty high i like to recommend to you at the beginning a wall structure that will enclose your settlement and then you work yourself away from there so it works like that we're going to set up walls here first i want to set up a structure that'll leave up a entrance like uh like up here and the rest i want to be walled off pretty much so we're picking up a wall now so in this game walling is a little bit more complicated so you see here the direction of my wall if i press r the direction swaps you can only draw a line if the direction of your wall is correct so as you can see here now it works uh, pretty neatly here it tells me that it's overlapping with a building that's the boat ruin which is the issue so we're going to get there and now 
over here. I want this uh, to take a, a, a turn around the corner, so we're going to pick up a corner wall and rotate that accordingly, and then we can put up more standard walls here. So, boom. Here I'm going to leave a uh, an entrance open for our enemies to enter. Always leave a uh, entrance to your labyrinth. Another corner wall. Rotate it again. And there we go. So if you don't uh, rotate the walls, something like that will happen. So this one is uh, placed incorrectly and you will be not able to uh, move in the dimension that you want to move. But um, if that happens, just click that thing and press X. Or if you place down wrong blueprints, you can also cancel them here. What, hel what helped me was to see that the correct dimension has a fat outlining, whereas the incorrect uh, dimension has a very slim green outline. All right, so we're going to put up another corner wall here and another corner wall there. And as you can see here, now the madness begins. And don't worry about placing down too many walls or something like that. Resources are virtually endless. The stone mine of yours will never deplete or so. So it's uh, it's completely fine to uh, to go crazy here. So I'm enclosing myself here completely for the time being. Just realized that I didn't want the corner block here. So I'm going to uh, cancel the construction here and replace that. And here we go. So this is going to be our our wall works. The walls all need a really high amount of uh, well, not really high amount, some wood and some stone. And here's our arrow tower. So as you can see here, the uh, the radius of that is rather slow, uh, rather low. And another really really important information here. That yellow line here will depict the enemy's flow. And as you can see here, now we have a, con a a pretty neat control over that. So I'm going to put down my towers here and one here as a sort of a last resort. And the towers, I want them on a high priority, whereas the walls can be on a lower priority. I could also go for something like, uh, let's say I want to have a little bit more well, okay i don't have anything i want to build but you could basically set up a uh, a civilian building here too all right we researched the multi-seasonal props let's go for uh, charcoal as well and now this is how our defenses uh, in the beginning will work of course like i mentioned before the closer you can get your uh, defenses to the gate the more efficiency you'll get out of that but with these tools uh, at your disposal, especially keep an eye out for that yellow line, you should be able to get your defenses at the, be at the beginning rolling. And feel free to be experimental in that regard. Research-wise, you can research other types of turrets there. So the arrow turret is only the most basic uh, type of turret. You get bombardment turrets that require iron, and these uh, turrets here will all require iron. And as you see, to get better quality towers you will need to modernize your settlement as well here's one thing that i wanted to uh, show as well let's, sec, let's keep researching if you select a piece of wall you can directly replace it with some type so if you misbuilt your uh, a little bit that's not really any issue and also you can upgrade that wall to to a tower if you want to but what's really really cool about that is it's really not that hard to redecide if you made some bad decisions. Same goes for those arrow towers. You have also the the option to configure their fire modes here. So they'll try to focus targets, spread, go for highest health, lowest health. I leave that uh, strategizing to you, dear viewer, because there's no solid best way or something like that. You'll have to find out on your own what you prefer strategy-wise. Okay, now let's move over to the, the to, to the next part because that's the basics of the defenses. You now need every, you all now know everything you need to know, and let's get over to the next part, which is also influencing the defense, but 
goes more into the game mechanic part, and that's elemental uh, elemental attributes. So you see, you have here this uh, fancy elemental wheel. I'll open up the elemental guide to emphasize it better. So in this game, you have all these elements. So that's eight of them total. Every element can be applied to a tower with those gems that you can't find here. Gems, of course, need to be uh, researched first, so you can't use them per se. You need to research the according technology first. Gems are first found randomly in your mines. Later down the road, you can also mine more specifically for them. Every elemental gem comes with its own properties. For example, I already own a wind gem. So a wind gem will provide knockback on hit if it's put into a offensive slot on your turret. And it's also going to have a different effect if it's uh, supporting your uh, suck here. So you can either use the, tur the gems to support other turrets or use them as a offensive quality. So, for example, Earth will have will, will have a uh, effect that will increase subsequent attacks, and fire has damage over time effects, and so on and so forth. It's uh, pretty straightforward. But all of this uh, diagram wants to tell you one thing. Everything which is connected with green lines, or maybe it's two things, <laughs> everything connected with green lines is uh, synergizing well with each other. That means if they work together, their effects will be magnified. If they are connected with a red line, they will nullify effects. So if I shoot with a wind tower on a, and on a baddie and then hit the same baddie with a water tower, the elemental effects will negate each other. So there will be no effect at all. But if I shoot with a wind tower first on an enemy and then follow up with the terra turret, the effect of that terra gem will be amplified. The effect even gets stronger if I hit my enemy first with Wind Turret, then with a Fire Turret, then in the end with that Terra Turret, because then he will be affected first by the enclosing elements, if you want to say so, which will ultimately magnify this effect to a greater extent. This is a pretty neat system, which not only makes building towers and mazes a little bit more complicated, because you want to stay aware of possibly negating effects, it also allows you to put up a lot of different strategies, because you will be able to put up certain clusters. For example, if I have enough Terra gems and uh, Lightning gems, I could put up an extremely amplified damage over time corridor, where I, or well, emphasize mostly in this element. So if I would only use these three elements in a certain corridor of my mace, this element would be the strongest. So you can mix and match like crazy here. Another thing worth mentioning, there's also prismatic gems. They are super rare and they will apply all elemental effects on one hit, never negating anything. So they are basically the super Saiyan gems. Extremely rare, no downsides, just slap them on and use them. All right, so we researched now the uh, charcoal hut and the mortar mill. I don't want to explain that deeper. It's uh, it's the, more of the same. You build that building, you use mortar masons to create mortar out of stone. You use charcoal burners to create charcoal out of uh, wood. The only thing that's really new there is that you need to keep track of your base materials. That's another game mechanic that I really want to talk about. These refining processes, they, they all need you to stay aware about your resource consumption. In general, this game puts a high emphasis on focus, that you have to focus on your resource consumptions and developments at your hometown, while at the same time not letting your uh, defense construction down. That's really a pretty neat part. So here, you can now build mines that have a chance of mining gems. And let's research that wind gem. So we can. So you see here, first you research the wind damage, and then you research the wind boost. And the boosts all have a uh, significant other effect regarding to the element that they are. And it's the same system. A Terra booster will boost fire and wind particularly good, and so on and so forth. 
So building your maze is an elemental puzzle, which is really, really cool. And that sums up pretty much the gameplay of this one. I already mentioned it before, maybe, but your victory condition is researching the victory statue and building it. And once that's done, you get to leave that map and enter the next one. So it's a pretty nifty thing. The following maps have more, uh, have more um, structural problems, so you won't get another free field with uh, lots of uh, space to work with again there are different challenges and yeah exodus borealis is a absolute recommendation for everybody who likes tower defense and colony building games because the genres blend in massively well together and once you stuck your head into that rabbit hole you'll have a lot of fun believe me so Right now, we haven't seen any fight, but, well, you know, there's not that much to explain. The enemy will come here and get shot by my arrow towers. If you have done everything correctly, there's going to be no problem. Okay, so let's summarize it. This game is a lot of fun if you are into the genre. I have found so far really only one gripe, and that's uh, how walls work. It's a, little bit, uh, it's a little bit annoying, but beyond that, really cool stuff all the way down. Really, really uh, big recommendation from my side. Alright, so thanks for watching everybody. Drop your questions into the comment box below. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel. I'd be deeply delighted if you did so. Also, down in the description box, you'll not only find the, uh, the timestamps that I was talking about, you'll also find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams my Discord community where you find like-minded gamers and of course you'll also find links there for the direct support of my channel. I'd be really really delighted if you check them out but if you don't, don't mind it too much either. I'm really happy that you watched this video and spent all that time. It really meant a lot to me already. So have fun and enjoy gaming. See you guys soon. Goodbye.